Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Alina Fieldhouse, where the Division IV District Semifinal between Kalina and Ottoville just got underway. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside Mark Bagley. Ottoville missed their first three-point attempt, and the Wildcats of Kalina have the basketball now. As number 24, Ethan Warnicky works into the short corner on the far side at the top of the key to Drew first. Warnicky will let one fly off the heel, and a rebound off the fingertips of Evan Steckschulte, but he was on the end line, and that's a turnover by the Wildcats. And two defensive rebounds right off the start, Garrett. The backside war in this game tonight is going to be really important. Both times the defense got won that war early on in this game. So just one minute gone here in this first quarter as Ottoville brings the ball up the floor with Kellen Schlackbaum. He'll work to the right wing. Crossover at the free throw line, rises, fires, left it just short, and Jaden Smith rips down a rebound, lost the handle on it, goes out of play, and it will stay with the Wildcats. Still scoreless here in this first quarter. And I think, Garrett, we're going to see that tonight. They're going to try to put Schlagbaum in ball screen situations because in the man-to-man -man defense, flies the switch. They want a mismatch there with Schlagbaum. Wildcats first to the high right point, bounces to Evan, Ethan Warnicke. He'll hold, gives to Smith at the top of the key. Surveys for just a moment, works to his left. Hirsch, ball to pass. Miller off a screen, free throw line jumper off the mark. Schlagbaum rips the rebound down and comes back quickly the other way. Hands off to Grant Lease, bounces. Alex Seaver in the lane and he scores the first bucket for either squad tonight. And you can see through two minutes, Garrett, the stats are almost even. Uh, that's how it's going to be most of the night, I think. This is going to come down to possession game. Who makes the first adjustment? So we'll go through keys as the game goes on. Ball goes out of play off of Kaleida. As you see the enthusiasm there from the Ottoville defense, the Wildcats, the Putnam County League champ, the number two seed coming into this Elida district, while Ottoville, the Putnam County League is runner-up. They're 18-5, Kaleida 19-4, Ottoville number three seed in this district. Schlagbaum stands left to the center circle and is patient. Throws to the right to Michael Turnwald. He'll give up to Carter Horseman at the free throw line. Tries to back the defender down behind the back pass. Got in a tough spot. Grant Lease rejected. And the rebound comes down to Evan Steckschulte, but his pass long. And maybe just a little bit too much adrenaline pumping through those, those high school seniors. And we got a lot of them on the floor, but uh, just maybe a little too excited to start this game, Mark? Yeah, and, and these teams know each other so well. The coaches are great friends. Uh, they do a lot of things together. I mean, these players all know each other. So it's going to be, again, a game of adjustments and runs. But you can see early on what Ottaville is trying to do, and, and Kaleida is being real patient offensively, and Ottaville wants this game sped up. 2 nothing, big green, 5-20 remaining. Top of the key. As... Keaton Schnipke in the game for the first time. Had it stolen away by Drew First. Race to the window, back the other way, and the first bucket for the Wildcats goes to First, and we're all knotted up at two. Quickly, back the other way, Horseman. Baseline in a tough spot, double team. Kicks out of it. Schnipke for three. Bang! And we saw out of those penetration. That's the key for Kalina tonight. We penetrated and then threw back out uh, for the open three. And you saw Kalina here at get a, a live ball turnover. Those are buckets you can't defend. James Smith receives the entry pass, spins at the block, stripped, and the first foul for either squad goes against the big green. We've got a veteran crew here tonight, Garrett, that really, I, I think, will do a great job in this game. And you see two rivals that just really like to compete. Jason Langels, Langhaus, called for the first foul. Kalina inbounds. Langhaus nearly got his fingertips on the inbounds pass. Lands in the hands of E.J. Miller. Wildcats work it into the far corner. And Ethan Warnicke gives up. Joel Horseman in the game. Tries to get it down low. Ripped away by the big green. 4.15 to go in this opening quarter. 5-2 to score. And that's three turnovers early for Kaleida. Schlagbaum, top of the key, crosses over. Back to the basket, picks up the dribble. Has to get rid of it, does. Alex Seaver, a lot of contact in the lane and a push called against Kaleida. 
And that's again the ball screen action trying to create switches. Then it's a one on one game for both teams tonight. And that, and that opportunity ought to have won that matchup. First foul committed by Jaden Smith, first committed by Kaleida. It's Langhouse. Looks to throw it in from just right of his own basket. Inbounds, easy inbounds, but missed the jumper to Carter Horseman. Rebound by Kaleida. And it past the halfway point here in the first quarter. It's 5-2, Big Green. The Wildcats look for a bucket. And watch when they get the ball to the high post how hard the Kaleida cuts. They're one of the best cutting teams I've seen this year. Great poke from behind by Schlagbaum. And he wants the basketball back, and he'll walk it across the timeline with 3.30 to go here in the first. Schlagbaum, mid-post, tries to find a backdoor cut to Seaver. Stolen away by the Wildcats. Nearly stolen away by Ottaville in return. As Drew first will settle things down for the Wildcats. And Ottaville's got great hands, Garrett. They get a lot of tips, deflections, fields. We've seen that early on. Evan Stechelty at the high left point. Patiently bounces to Jaden Smith. Left side gets past the defender, right to the rack. And the 6'3 senior has his first basket of the evening. And he's averaging 14 for a reason, Garrett. That was a great one-on-one -one move. And no backside help for Ottaville, though. Easy layup. Schleichbaum gives to Horseman. Langhouse. Finds Horseman in the lane. Ball's loose. Out of play. Off the big green. What we've seen here, Garrett, the first almost six minutes, a lot of uneasy even play, a lot of turnovers, which you expect when they know each other. And, and the teams will settle down. And again, we find the score one point difference, and I think we're going to see a lot of that tonight. Well, how many times do you think the players from both sides heard every possession is going to be important, the ability to get every point is going to be important, especially not just because it's a Putnam County League game that somebody you, you know very well, but also, you know, it's a district tournament game and a, and a, on a big stage. Absolutely. The stats prove that out, too. The stats are even. E.J. Miller tries to throw back into play. Does. Left wing for the Wildcats. First spins. Back door to Evan Stechelty up and good. And the Kaleida Wildcats have their first lead of the game. There's the example, Garrett. Unbelievable cut as the player drives. They're great at that. Schlack bomb back quickly the other way. Kisses it off the window. And the Putnam County League Player of the Year has his first point. And Ryan Stechelty not happy with the defensive effort for the Kaleida Wildcats. We'll step aside as well with a timeout. 7-6, Big Green here in the first quarter on WOSN. Two minutes remain in this first quarter. 7-6, Ottoville with the lead. Kaleida the basketball in this Division IV District Semifinal. Winner will move on to play St. John's or Crestview, the winner of the nightcap here at Elida. Ethan Warnicke holds. Don't give to Evan Stechelty. In the lane, first, hangs, can't hit. Rebound poked out to Jaden Smith. Corner three from Steck Schulte, short. Another long rebound secured by the Wildcats. Smith can't hit on the third attempt for Kaleida, but nearly got the steal. Instead, Kellen Schlagbaum gets out away with it as Langhouse for three off the heel. And Smith climbs the ladder to get the rebound. And Coach Steck Schulte did not like that the action before and called that timeout really quick. Right hand hook shot from Ethan Warnicke. Gives Kalina back the lead 8-7 with exactly 60 seconds to go here in this first quarter. He really thought Slagbaum was getting downhill on the ball screen too much and, and wanted to make that adjustment on the timeout. And that was one of the keys they told us. You can't let Ottaville get downhill and it's exactly what happened before that timeout as Schlagbaum holds. Horseman for three in the lead. Got it. Carter Horseman shoots 41% from behind the three-point line. Buries that one. Makes it 10-8, Ottaville. And Ottaville's hurting quite on the pick and pop right now. 25 seconds to go here in this first quarter. 10-8, Ottaville to lead. Smith. Cross-court pass to Steck Schulte. Steps just inside the three-point line. And a foul. Committed by the Big Green with 16 and a half seconds. Just the second. As Ottaville make a couple of substitutions. Relatively clean first quarter here. And you can see there, Ottaville tried to knock that cut down, Garrett, because they cut so hard and they got called for the foul. Uh, it was the right call. 10-8 to score on the Ottaville Bank scoreboard. First, inbounds to Stechel. Deep pump faked on the three and holds. 
10 seconds in the quarter. Wildcats, patient, deliberate. Smith in the lane, drops it in. He's got four. And a long pass, long shot, I guess. Wide of the hoop. I was looking out for your safety bags as it was coming in your wheelhouse. After one, we're tied at 10 between Ottaville and Kaleida here on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight presented by the Ottaville Bank Company, large enough to serve you and small enough to know you. Also, our instant replay tonight provided by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor is a division of Alt's Seamless Spouting. All knotted up at 10 after one quarter of play, and what else would you expect between two squads who are awful familiar with one another? Well, we talked about that first game, 47-45 uh, overtime at Kaleida. Right at the end, Kaleida was able to win. That's the difference in the records. You flip that yeah. game, and it will just switch the record. So I think first to 40 in a tournament game may be the winner, but you know what? Garrett could go one, two, three overtimes as well. First. Gets a screen from Smith, works to the right, picks up the dribble. Bounce to Smith. Smith in the lane. Another easy bucket for the 6'3 senior. Jaden Smith, an all Putnam County League first team performer. And you see right, why right there, it's a 12 10 lead for the Wildcats. And, and uh, Clyde has the advantage of the length inside. That was a great isolation play with Smith. Horseman had it stripped away. First back the other way. Quickly, Euros off the window. No, fouled. And I believe Drew First will shoot our first least famous recipe free throws of the evening. And that's correct. And this is an opportunity, Garrett, uh, for third and fourth point on, on live ball turnovers. That was the key for Kaleida, yet Kaleida's cleared those live ball turnovers through these first uh, nine minutes or so. First is a 57% free throw shooter from the Lee's famous recipe free throw line. And a 5'11 senior hits the first. He's got three points on the evening. Average is seven. As the 5'11 senior goes back to the line, looking to grow this collider lead to four. He does. First with four. Makes it 14 10. And the difference has been layup turnovers, uh, you know, off, off turnovers by Ottaville. Both teams have four. Garrett here in the second quarter. Schlankbaum, right wing. Double team as he picked up the dribble, got rid of it. A contested three from Seavers on the way. No. Rebound, though, pulled down by Carter Horseman. Balls loose on a baseline, ripped away by First. Smith, the outlet, up ahead. Stack Schulte drops it in. 16 to 10 now on the Ottaville Bank scoreboard. Big Green looking for an answer. Schlagbaum bounces in the near corner. Turnwald. Gives it up to Schlagbaum. Screen. And he'll back back out near the midcourt stripe and direct the traffic. Once the lane clear, as he'll hand back off and get it right back from Alex Seaver. Schlagbaum. And Collette has done a great job of being better than a man one-on-one. -on -one. Right now, they are just better one-on-one. -on -one. Jump stop. Swatted right back at him by Evan Stackschulte. Stolen away by E.J. Miller. And a foul committed by Schlagbaum. So out of Hill now with four fouls in the half. Kalina still sitting on one. And Kalina is seven for ten in the field, Garrett. They've been layups this, this well, uh, whole and those, game. Those three misses were on the one possession, essentially, where they got three offensive rebounds and never weren't able to ever hit. Exactly. Kalina's length is really bottom of Ottaville here early in this game, the first um, ten minutes. And that's been the, the difference in the score. Ethan Warnicke along the sideline. Tries to bounce, miscommunication. Lands in the hands of Schlagbaum. He'll race up the floor, stop at the free throw line. Langhaus kicks back. Schnipke near corner, baseline drive. Picks it up. Three on the way from Alex Seaver. Short, out of play. And they'll say it goes to the Wildcats. And Ottaville's had great looks from three, Garrett, but they're only two of six to start this game. And rebounding has been a key. It's 10-3 to three collider right now. So layups and rebounding uh, has been a difference, and that's why it's a six-point game. 
and Kaleida told us, Ryan Stecksholte said, hey, we're going to have to rebound on both ends of the floor. And, and you, you mentioned there in those totals, it's a decided advantage for the Wildcats. Yeah, their three keys were dead ball versus live ball turnovers. They've, they've done that. They've rebounded the backside war. And they, the third one has handled the tournament atmosphere. They've done all three so far. That one stolen away by Ottaville. Two on three, back the other way. Ball put up and in by Alex Seaver. He's got four. First bucket in a while for the Big Green. Cuts the lead to four. And that's that live ball turnover. That just as I spoke, they ought to trade the turnover. Here comes another one. There's another one. Schlagbaum meanders through the defense. Blocked from behind by Jaden Smith. Schnipke in a tough spot. Throws it up and in. He's got five points. Quickly, the lead has shrunk from six to two as Ottaville's turned on the pressure. Smith, right wing, bounces. Joel Horseman holds. He'll bounce to first at the right elbow. Pump thinks. Bounces to Smith. Baseline, spins, hits. And he's been dominant inside on that, that move has. right there. They, they've really isolated that play well. Smith with eight. We approach the midway point of the second quarter, 18-14. Schlagbaum back to the basket. Finds a wide open horseman in the lane. Tried to float one off the window. Fouled, and he'll shoot the first free throws for Ottoville this evening. You see Schlagbaum blocked from behind by Smith the last time down. But the putback by Schnitke was up and good on the ultimate outdoor instant replay. And that was treated off a turnover. Then the offensive rebound, that 50-50 ball they got, uh, was a big play. Carter Horseman's first free throw of the evening. Drops in, 60% shooter from the Lee's famous recipe free throw line. 440 remaining here in this first half. 18-15, Kaleida with the lead. It's Horseman, the six-foot senior. All Putnam County League second team. Hits both of them, giving him five points. And this, this is the tournament, Garrett, game of runs. Neither team's going to blink here. Who's going to make that first big run? That's going to be key to see. E.J. Miller up the near sideline at Jacob Siebenek. Miller gets it back in the lane, creates some space, created too much space on the charge. And that's seven turnovers now for Kleiner. So just as we talked about how well Kleiner had done taking care of the ball, they've now had a couple turnovers here in a row, and that's been... How Ottawa got back in this game after being down six. Saw a great looking at there on the ultimate outdoor instant replay. Put that chest right through the sternum of the defender. And which bench player, Garrett, will be the one that steps up for either team too? Backdoor cut, Chase Langhouse. Kicks to the far corner to Turnwald. He'll pump. Top of the key to Schnipke. Schnipke off the window. No, tried to chase down his own rebound. Schlagbaum drives a lane, lost the handle. Chases it down in the far corner. Turnwald for three. No. Schnitke, the offensive rebound and put back. Schnitke with seven off the bench, like Mark mentioned. And we're all square at 18. He's done a great job of being in the right place at the right time. That's four offensive rebounds now for Audeville. How's it tied? They're right back in the rebounding war. And so it's a chess match here early. 3.40 to go in this first half. First thought about the three. Instead, will hold. Nearly ripped away was Chase Langhouse, and then a foul back the other way by the Wildcats. Kaleida was trying to get it down low, I believe, to Siebenek. Got it ripped away. And that's one of those fundamental plays. If you shot fake and take one dribble baseline, Garrett, for the bounce pass, that's going to be a layup. But instead, a game of inches, uh, turnover, um, Kaleida, and that's added up to eight so far here in this first half. Both squads with four fouls here with 3.30 to go on the Ottaville Bank scoreboard. Schlagbaum picks up the dribble into the far corner. Turnwall, he'll drive baseline, stops, tough spot. Altered by Jaden Smith was the shot. That's well, the fourth block shot for Clyde. Their blank is bothering Ottaville inside. Evan Stack Schulte tries to go back door, dribbled it out of play. Ethan Warnicke tried to get the pass as he was driving baseline and just slapped it off the baseline. When there's that much ball pressure, it's hard to throw a chest pass from a short distance. Yeah, that's got to be where you drive at the defender and go back door. And that's where Clyde is starting to turn the ball over, just on making pressure-type turnovers off, off pressure 
defense. Black Bob hands off to Lang out. Gets to Horseman in the lane. Dances around the post. Fouled on the shot. Evan Stackschulte incredulous that he didn't commit a foul. Nonetheless, it will send Carter Horseman to the line. You see a look at it here on the Ultimate Outdoor Instant Replay. Looks like Horseman kind of lost the handle on it when he went to go up and take the shot. But the six-foot senior returns to the Lean Stamus Recipe free throw line. Misses that one. Out of it, make just a couple of changes. As Alex Seaver will come back in the ball game in exchange for Keaton Schnipke. Neither team the bonus, uh, Garrett. It's five and four, so again, a very clean game as far as fouls. And got the second one, did Horseman. He's got six first half points to give the Big Green the 19 18 advantage on the Ottawa Bank scoreboard. Ottoville will pressure into backcourt. Kalina gets it across the timeline, but stolen away from behind by Horseman. Schlagbaum across the timeline in the corner. Seaver right back to Schlagbaum. And I'm sure Ottoville wants to see Schlagbaum start to get going too a little bit. He's done a great job of distributing, but now they're looking for him to score a little bit. Seaver pump fakes instead, drives to the block. Horseman in the lane, double teamed. Seaver, corner three, bang! Bottoms on the triple for Seaver. Throws the lead to four. He's got seven. Timeout called by Ryan Stackshilty of Kaleida. As Ottaville goes on a mini run here, making it 22-18 with 2.09 remaining here in this first half. And we're going to keep it here. 2.09, as I mentioned, remaining here in this first half. And it was 16-10 to 10 at one point. And now this run by Ottaville has them back on top. And you, you think about the chess match. And really, Ottaville has kind of learned from what their mistakes were of getting it down low. And just that length of Kaleida was a problem for them. And as soon as I said Kaleida had been great on the keys at 16-10, they had three straight, straight live ball turnovers. And they're up to 10 now for the game. Yeah, that was the first factor. The next factor is offensive rebounds. Ottaville crashed the glass and got two more buckets off that. And all of a sudden, Coach Dexterly has used two timeouts. Yep. He's used the, used the 30 and used the full. And, and so he's down to three in a game like this. Um, you need all the, all the timeouts you get. And I understand why he called the timeout because they're rattled right now a little bit. It's a big run here by Ottaville. You see how everybody got here on that tournament trail. It's Ottaville 18 and 5, 18th in the Martin RPI. Meanwhile, when you look at the score, 57 points a game. Their average margin of victory, 12 points. Got as high as 73. Kaleida, we mentioned earlier, you know, that game between Ottaville and Kaleida was the difference in their records. Wildcats 19 and 4, champions of the Putnam County League in 2023. Ottaville averages 57. Kaleida 54 a contest. The, the stats are eerily similar between it, these two. It's so even, Garrett. That's what we're seeing this game, a game of runs. And, and, and don't be surprised if Kalata goes to their 1-2-2 pressure. They used that a lot the first game against Ottawa and caused them problems. Two minutes remaining here in this first half. Wildcats, James Smith from the top of the key. Works right, throws to Evan Steckschulte. He'll hold, guarded by Langhouse. First, tries to get rid of it, does. Ethan Warnicke works to his right. First will hold. Look for Smith in the post here at some point in this possession. They'll bounce. Warnicke near corner. They're trying to find the mismatch inside right now, and out of those pressures, Roy really bothered them. Warnicke's in a tough spot, and he's getting called for the five-second violation. And ultimately, that's been the difference in the game from down six to up four is Ottaville's pressure has just turned up. 90 seconds remaining in this first half on the Ottaville Bank scoreboard. And for Kaleida, halftime can't come fast enough. They want to they had to yeah. regroup here at halftime. It, they'll be fine, but they need to regroup. Yeah, you mentioned just down to three Metzger Financial Services timeouts. Wild, or Big Green, I beg your pardon, for three. Michael Turnwald's triple off the mark. Smith grabs the rebound, and he'll outlet up ahead to Evan Stackschulte. They really need to get Smith in the post here if they can. Good to miss that. Langhouse stolen away. Three on two. Now three on three. Back the other way for the Big Green. Schlagbaum 
Gives to Turnwald. Back to Schlagbaum. Hide that three for just a moment. Backdoor pass. Langhouse up and under. Blocked by Stackschulte. And he'll pick up another foul. I guess his first foul, actually. Get a great look at it here on the ultimate out. No more instant replay. Great backdoor pass. And you see the contact on the forearm. So and and the, the way that this game has been created by Schlagbaum has been by his passing. That was a great pass. Langhouse first free throw attempt off the mark. Score remains 22-18. Under a minute to play here in this first half between Ottawa and Kaleida. As we mentioned, Kaleida won the first matchup 47-45 in overtime. Jace Langhouse, 6'1", junior. Hits the second free throw attempt, his first point of the evening. Grows the lead to five, 23-18. Out of goal now, four for six in this first half in the free throw line. Smith doesn't use the screen, picks up the dribble. Hands off to Braylon Smith at the high right point. Here comes Smith in the post. It's going to happen this possession. E.J. Miller puts up a shot. Ball still loose, lands in the hands of Jaden Smith. He gets back to the tough spot. Got the hoop and the foul. Didn't think it happened that way, Garrett, off with the rebound, but he got into a spot where it's been all night and made a great effort play here on the tip ball, 50-50 and one. You see the box out attempt there by Carter Horseman called. Actually, Jace Langhouse called for the foul. And Ottawa will have to make some adjustments at halftime to Smith too because his length inside is more really bothering him on those switches. He converts the old-fashioned three-point play. 11 first-down points for Jaden Smith. And now with 30 seconds remaining, conceivable to, for Ottaville to hold for the final shot here. Definitely. And, and here we are after all these runs, Garrett. It's a two-point game. Yep. Just like the, the first game was in overtime. It's just, it just a game of, of, of chess. And whatever team makes that halftime adjustment, Garrett, is going to be the one that comes out. Schlagbaum sends every big green or Every, every other green jersey to the one side of the floor. He'll go to the window. Can't hit as Horseman nearly ripped away the rebound. And a jump ball called, and the possession arrow favors the big green. Just another effort play. That, and that's five offensive rebounds now on, on that jump ball. That's been a difference. Where Clyde is out rebounding out of but only has two offensive rebounds. So 5.7 remain in the first half. Michael Turnwald will inbound. Into the far corner, Alex Seaver for three. Good if it goes, it doesn't. Schlagbaum will let one fly from half court. Just missed. And we played one half of basketball. Ottaville leads Kaleida 23-21 to in a tight one here in the Division IV District Semifinals on WOSN. Second half about to get underway. Ottaville leads Kaleida 23-21. Garrett C. Wright and Mark Bagley here inside the Alana Fieldhouse. As the Wildcats winners of 13 straight trail at the half by two against the Ottaville Big Green as Jaden Smith somehow able to throw that back into play. Smith a big first half, 11 points, six rebounds. And and Clyde, Clyde came out with a lob play, but they overthrew it. But there's Smith again in the post. Smith able to get rid of it. E.J. Miller will rise and fire. Can't hit. Rebound secured by Grant Lees. And we saw that adjustment right there, Garrett. Ottawa doubled the post. It made him shoot a contestant three late. Well, and as well as things went for Jamie Smith in that area, it was bound to happen that the Big Green would make that adjustment as Schlagbaum will rise and fire. The leading scorer for the Big Green, Putnam County League Player of the Year. Off the mark, only had two points there in the first half, and I'm sure if you told Ryan Steckschulte, hey, we're, you're going to shoot 60% from the half, to, in the half, and have Kellen Schlagbaum only score two points, and he probably didn't think that they'd be trailing by two, but they turned the basketball over and gave up a lot of offensive rebounds. And you hit it, Garrett. That was the two factors. It's 60% to apply to 33 for Ottaville, but Ottaville's attempted uh, 12 more shots. E.J. Miller gets the bounce pass off the inbounds, kisses it off the window, and we're all knotted up at 23 here in the early stages of this third quarter. And Ottaville's going to a sub early on this quarter, trying to make it just. Michael Turnwald off the top of the key will bounce, give off to Carter Horseman. Pumps, cross-court pass. 
three on the way, wide open for Alex Seaver. No, long rebound though, chased down by the Wildcats. Jaden Smith, Euros, lays it off the window and quickly is given Kalina back to lead at two. And again, just when you think a team's kind of grab control, the other team comes back. It's just a, it's a puncher's game and, and both teams are fighting like crazy. Turn wall, jabs, top of the key, throws left, Horseman. Had it poked away. First got the steal, gets the outlet. One on two back the other way. Can't hit. Offensive rebound put back by Warnicky is off the mark, but he's fouled, and he'll go to the least famous recipe free throw line for the first time here in the second half. Glida oh, has really jump started this game in half. And, and it, what they did well in the first half, they're really capitalizing on right now. Some layup turnovers. Yeah. And, and getting uh, inside and that, now getting to the free throw line. Ethan Warnicky, the 6'2 senior, hits the first free throw attempt. Warnicky shoots just under 62% from the least famous recipe free throw line for the season. Averages just under nine points of contest for the balanced scoring Wildcats. Has three so far. And will stay there as Schnipke rips down a rebound for the Big Green. A 26-23 collide of the advantage on the Ottawa Bank scoreboard. And Schnipke had a really good first pass. And Coach Eatworth had served him in the line for Roy Gwick. Seaver thought about the three. Instead drives. Kicks to Schlagbaum on the left wing. He'll reset with 540 in the quarter. Trailing by three. Tries to get by the defender. Picks up the dribble right side of the post. Throws back. Horseman. Turnwall, gives back to Schlagbaum. Kaleida will reset once more, or Ottawa will reset once more as the Kaleida faithful cheer their defense on. Schnitke in the high post, traveled with it. Keaton Schnitke got in a tough spot, went to get rid of it, tried to rip through that defender, instead picked up the pivot foot. And they'll give the basketball back to the Wildcats, trailing by three. And out of those guard their bench early here, two minutes or three minutes into this third quarter to try to create a spark. They, they come out a little flat, uh, turned it over, and, and uh, Clyde has capitalized on this and had a 5 0 run here. Jaden Smith bringing the ball up the floor for the Wildcats. Gives to Warnicky. Ethan Warnicky. Hands off to Furch. Picks up the dribble. Smith at the free throw line. Lobs down low. Swatted from behind as Evan Steckschulte put up the shot. And Carter Horseman picks up the dribble. Had it ripped away by Steckschulte. And out of those over fade right now, and the length of Clyde is getting them. E.J. Miller to the window, blocked from behind by Schlagbaum. And a foul committed in transition by Drew Fersh of Kaleida. That will be his first. First foul committed by the Wildcats here in the second half. And, and right now, this game has gotten very physical right now, and a good timeout by Coach Eatworth. Newton North has called the Metzger Financial Services timeout, 26-23. We'll step aside as well here on WOSF. Instant replays tonight are brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Pulse. Seamless spouting. Take a look at the Putnam County League final standings. The top two tango going tonight here at the Alada Fieldhouse. Ottaville, 18 and 5. Kaleida, 19 and 4. Ottaville, every one of their five losses. Those teams are still alive in district play. Yeah, it just shows you what, what great season these two teams have had. That, that was an excellent timeout by Coach Udor to get, get something here. A set play coming out of timeout. Flag haunt, flag bomb downhill. Double teamed, somehow gets out of it, can't hit, however. And Schlagbaum remains at just two points here on the evening. And he's one for nine. To be one for nine down three, that, that is a testament to Ottaville, too, as a team. Smith, right side, surveys, tries to get past the defender, spins, stripped. Ball still loose and finally corralled by Carter Horseman. He'll sprint through that Kaleida D. Langhouse, up and under. Jack Langhouse with three points, cuts the lead to one. There's that turnover, converted for a layup, and again, cat and mouse back and forth. Jaden 
Jaden Smith between the circles. The first. Warnicke trying to post up. Instead, Steck Schulte has it at the top of the key. Miller bounces to Smith. Spins, stripped. Ball still loose. Goes right into the hands of Steck Schulte. Kevin Steck Schulte, the leading scorer for the Wildcats, gives to first. And they're really trying to get him involved right now in the post and, and, and get him going. Bursch, right side, got in a tough spot, stripped once more in another turnover, forced by the big green D. Schlagbaum, hands off the Horseman, cross-court pass, Seaver for three, blocked, thrown somehow back into play by the big green, jumper, well short, and it lands in the hands of Gene Smith. And that, that was an example, both teams are playing real hard right now, Garrett, but they're forcing things, they're trying yeah. to do things one-on-one -on -one against defenses that know what they're going to do. And why does Lang once again bother Onneville there? Smith hands off to Fursch. Points to a spot on the floor. He wants a screen. Works around between the circles. Warnicke lobs down low to Miller. Smith in a tight spot. Gives back to Stack Schulte. Rid of it to Warnicke. Had great positioning, but a foul committed by Schnicke. And one of the difficulties right now for Kaleida, Garrett, has been they're trying to enter the post from free throw line extended, and the ball's got to be swung to the wing. That's a tough entry pass from the foul line extended. I think if they make that adjustment, they'll get better looks inside. Ethan Warnicke back to the league's famous recipe free throw line. That one too strong off the back iron. So the score remains 26-25. Warnicke is 6-2 senior. Looking for his fourth point of the evening here with 2.26 remaining in the third quarter. 6-2 senior. Steps back to the least famous recipe free throw line. One of two from that trip. Has four. And Clyde has not gone to the 1-2-2 two, two tonight. Maybe the bigger floor here at the field house. I not really sure, but that's an adjustment they made from last game. Turn wall, pump takes on the three. Schlagbaum will let it fly. Short, offensive rebound once more by the big green. Turn wall, missed everything. A lot of those have some good looks here. They just can't make the open shot right now. Two minutes to go in the third. Two point lead for the Wildcats. Smith on the right wing. Guarded by Schlagbaum. Baseline drive, kicks in the near corner to Miller. Joel Horseman stripped. Seaver, easy layup, makes it 27 all. And, and again, both teams are shooting contested shots. An unbelievable block and finish right there for Ottaville, and we're all knotted up again. And a big green one of pressure. Miller, free throw line jumper, no. And Ottaville wants this Temple gear. They want to play fast to get more possessions. And those extra possessions were mainly the chief reason why they led the halftime break. They forced those 12 turnovers while Kaleida shot 60%. And 10 more shots from the field will do that. Extra possession. Schlagbach holds. We approach one minute to go. Schnipke, baseline drive, picks it up. Not in a tight spot. They'll say it was not a double dribble. Lang outs. Bounces to Turnwall to the near corner. And another Metzger Financial Services timeout called by the Big Green. 30-second timeout, 52.4 remain in the quarter. You see on the ultimate outdoor instant replay, perfectly timed block by Alex Seaver, and an easy layup back the other way. And the length of both teams have created plays like that tonight. It's incredible. We've gone through this whole game. It's tied up, and, and both teams now, Garrett, have three timeouts left. That's a late timeout for... Audible. It shows you how important every possession is in this game. And Coach Utenor felt like this possession right here is a key part of this game. See a great look at the weekend schedule here on WOSN with all the tournament boys and girls basketball action going on. We'll continue to have live basketball coverage for you later this week when you see that Division II Liberty Benton Regional between Van Wert, St. Mary, Shawnee, Defiance, and then Friday we're back here at the Alada Field. That will be live at 6 o'clock for that district final. Back on WTLW. So under a minute to go here in this third quarter. 
27 all. Alex Seaver looks to inbounds. Gets rid of it. He'll get it right back. Schlag bomb. 45. We'll see if they're content to play for one here. Last time we thought they were, Garrett. They cleared the side off, and Schlag bomb yep. made a great move and just missed it. Stan just left of the center circle with 35. And first to 40 sounds good again, doesn't it? That, that it does. So we're closing stages of the third quarter, all square at 27. Schlagbaum continues to dribble, just two points on the evening. The senior, Button County League Player of the Year, averages 14. High ball screen coming with a flare. Schlagbaum works to the right. Gives, gets it right back, straight away for three, and a big bucket by the senior. Gives them a three-point advantage. First has to let one fly. Well left of the bucket. And we played three. The three ball from Schlagbaum gives the big green the three-point advantage after three. Our scoreboard tonight presented by the Ottaville Bank Company. Large enough to serve you, small enough to know you. The big green leads 30-27 after three quarters here on WOSN. A lot of student section. They want to come back here on Friday night. Not sure what the theme would be. Uh, Hawaiian, you know, weather's pretty nice. I don't know if it's supposed to be all that nice on Friday. I'm not sure what we've got to bring Parkas back on Friday. But. That's the way the last four weeks have gone. And, and what a <laughs> great timeout by Coach Udendorf. He knew they had possession arrow, too. They got the shot they wanted, a three, got slag bomb going. They were on the same play right now. And then they get the ball. Get the screen, slag bomb gets it right back. Crosses over, pass Smith, right block, blocked. Nearly got it back, did Schlagbaum, but it's ripped away by Evan Stackschulke. And the Wildcats will have the opportunity to tie here to open this fourth quarter. Great play by Clyde. That's their seventh block shot, Garrett, tonight. Their length has bothered Ottaville inside, especially Schlagbaum in the drive. Smith surveys, tries to get past the defender. Working against Horseman. Get it down low, Warnicky. Pump fakes, blocked by Horseman in a tight spot behind a Mac dribble. Fancy, dangerous play, but he got it right to Schlagbaum. And fouls aren't an issue either, Garrett. It's yep. two, and one, two and one, so again, seven minutes to go. Again, lots of blocked shots due to athleticism and not making the one more pass. Schlagbaum works right, crosses over. Back to the basket. Hands off the Horseman, who gives to turn one. Ottaville's space is messed up right now. Clyde has done a lot of that by forcing them into that. Schlagbaum in the lane, kicks. Seaver for three. He's fouled, and he'll shoot three. Lee's famous recipe, free throws. And Clyde did everything right, Garrett, except for a jump into the shooter. That's a huge play. Again, three to end the third, and now three free throws to start the fourth. And every possession matters, and that's... Those are the things you go back on and look at when the game's over. Alex Seaver, the 6'3 senior, shoots 77% from the line. And left that one short. Big Green, 66% as a team from the charity stripe. Seaver will step right back to it after the short first one. That hits every bit of the rim and drops in, giving him 10 points. Averages 9.1, so just over his season average. The third attempt from the Lee's famous recipe free throw. It's good as well. And the lead is now five for Ottaville. And, and why do you need to get the ball? There are two horses here. Steck Schulte, Smith. One of those two need to get the ball in this possession in a, in a spot they can score. Steck Schulte in a corner. Gives to Smith. He'll bounce to Warnicky. And he'll drive baseline. And a foul committed by Alex Seaver. That'll be his second. So the Wildcats inbound left of their basket. First looks to trigger it in. The lob. You know, Warnicky gives it right back to first. Smith off the heel. Schlagbaum the rebound. 
And right now, Otteville's making fun of take shots they want them to take. And that's been an advantage Otteville here into the third start of the fourth. Big Green bounce to Schlagbaum. Six minutes remaining in this Division IV District Semifinal. Winner moves on to play Crest Sea Delta St. John's on Friday night. Langhouse back to Schlagbaum. Ripped away. Ball's loose and a Metzger Financial Services timeout. No, a foul. Committed by the Big Green. Goes against Chase Langhouse. And that's a great play by Clyda, but Otterville got their spacing got messed up, and Clyda capitalized with their long arms. They, when you get lax at all, they capitalize, and that was another example of just a careless play and a great play by uh, Kaleida there. Third foul coming to my Langhouse, fourth by the Big Green as a team. 5:45 to go. And how did Kaleida score to get the lead? They got layups, Garrett. They need to get layups or free throws right now. They need to get something going to the basket against Ottaville's great man-to-man -man defense. That first half, they got Smith down low several times. He's going to try to get there once more. Instead, he'll come out and set the high ball screen. E.J. Miller gives to Fersh. He'll drive down Main Street. Looks to get rid of it. Does. Jumper from Evan Steck Schulte off the mark. And Carter Horseman wants to run. Instead, will wisely pull it back out. And a great backside rebound by, by Ottaville and just a clinic defensive possession once again. And they've done that now for about four minutes, Garrett. Schlagbaum right at the center circle. Turnwall spins. Baseline. Slaps it off the floor to Schlagbaum. Or Seaver, I beg your pardon. He'll pull it a pass to Langow, so he'll pull it back out. Wildcats will pressure. Schlagbaum, right side. This is the kind of spacing that Schlagbaum can work under now. They're, they're spreading the floor, and eventually he's going downhill. Langhouse. Pass stolen away by Fersh. Cross court pass, E.J. Miller sets up for three. Short. And another rebound secured by the Big Green. And fatigue is starting to set in a little bit. The shots are short. They missed some shots, and it's really frustrating for him. Horseman, right block, kicks. Back to Schlagbaum, Horseman at the free throw line. Turnwall pumps. We approach the midway point of this fourth quarter. Langhouse. Fouled. Nope, uh, Metzger Financial Services timeout called by the Ottoville Big Green with 4.03 remaining in 30-second variety. So a five-point lead here with, for the Ottoville Big Green and the Metzger Financial Services timeout. What's the message from Keith Uchtdorf to his squad right now? Well, expect something different defensively. I think Kaleida, with only two team fouls, four minutes to go, Garrett, has to do some trapping and, and to speed them up and get this game where, because right now it's, it's slowed down, and that's Ottoville's favor because they're up by five. But with only two team fouls, I really look for the one, two, two, or some kind of trapping defense. And the, and the risk of that then for Kaleida is giving the layup to Schlagbaum, who again hasn't scored a lot tonight, but he's controlled the game here late. And a driving layup with an open floor is, is what you may see here. Or if Kaleida is successful, a layup turnover to get them back in the game at down three. So again, we, we said it's going to be a cat and mouse. And there's a lot of time left here. There's tons of basketball left. Neither team close to bonus. So expect uh, something different here defensively from Kaleida to trap a little bit. Michael Chernwald will throw it in for the Big Green. Looking. The 5'9 junior bounces it into Schlagbaum in the corner. Still has the dribble if he wants it. Does. Picked it up after the snap one dribble. And a foul. Goes and against think, Evan Stengschel. And I think Clyde was in a 1-2-2 two, two there. It's hard to tell the way they were playing it, but it, we'll see here on the side out of bounds play. So now we're under four minutes to go. And a somewhat eerily similar situation that we saw between these two in a regular season where Ottaville had a late fourth quarter lead, as we're not in the late stages yet, but Kalina was able to battle back and grab a two-point overtime victory. 47-45 in their Putnam County League contest. Ottaville will just throw it in the backcourt this time, and Schlagbaum will receive. It's a 1-2-2, and they have length on the wings and at the point. They're really long in this, and they're really good at it. Turnwall. Bounces back to Schlagbaum. Tries to pull it out. Nearly stolen away. Smith 
going to be called for his third foul. And both teams have four fouls, so we're still three away from the bonus. Two second foul, I beg your pardon. Alex Seaver, number 22 for Ottawa, has two fouls. So that is Jaden Smith, number 22 for Kalidas. Second foul. 334 remains. Big Green is in the backcourt once more. Schlagbaum, an experienced ball handler for the Big Green. And the Bear, there, ball goes out of bounds. Off of Carter Horseman for Ottaville, so turnover forced by Kaleida. And the basketball lesson there, Garrett, when someone comes to you, you can't throw a bounce pass because that ball's coming at an angle and you get closer, that bounce pass goes off your ankles and out of bounds. And a great play by Kaleida. Great adjustment. Coach Steck's shoulder to go to the 1-2-2. They, they need something inside. Wildcat faithful rising to their feet along the far sideline. Steck Schulte gives to first. Smith posted up on the left side of the lane. Instead, first pressured, gets to Stack Schulte. And they need movement, but they're getting tired right now. Their cuts aren't near as hard. Smith lost the handle, stolen away by Ottaville. Ryan Stack Schulte telling the Wildcats to pressure. Big Green get it across the timeline. Horseman, Seaver, Schlagbaum had to fight off wanting to shoot that three. Instead, Seaver lost it. Up ahead to Smith. It's a race to the window. He's fouled. And they'll say he was in the act of shooting. So he'll get two Lee's Famous Recipe free throws. And this is where a scenario where Ottaville still needs to attack here. They've, they've had some two-on-ones, three-on-twos, and they're not attacking. And you go backwards against Lang, this is what happens. And why has got a chance to score points at the clock stop, which is what Ottaville doesn't want. 2.33 remain on the Ottawa Bank scoreboard. Jaden Smith, the 6'3 senior guard. Misses the first. They've been stuck on 27 for a long time. Smith, a 75% free throw shooter from the Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line. Sitting at 13 points on the evening. Missed them both. And their lead remains 5 for Ottaville. Langhouse gives to Turnwald. Nearly had it stripped from behind. And they foul. Committed by Kaleida. Still two more fouls before the 1-1. One and, one. and Ottaville's got to be ball tough. And Kaleida needs some kind of play to happen here where they can get something scored to the basket um, to, to get in their full court defense. They just can't score right now. It was 30-27 after three quarters. Just two points scored here in this fourth quarter. Turnwald has it at the right wing. Got past his defender to the window. Got the hoop and the foul. A big time play for Michael Turnwald. His first basket of the evening comes at a Pivotal time for the Big Green. And maybe not the player you'd expect to make the move here, but what a great play by Turnwald. The and one opportunity. Many years ago, I had the opportunity to coach his dad, and I'm sure dad's proud right now watching this move. The lead is in the front row here along the near sideline. Turnwald can't hit the old fashioned three point play. The lead is seven. And a foul committed by the Big Green on the rebound attempt. And both teams, Garrett, now in the bonus the rest of the way, the last 214. So lots of time left, lots of things can happen. This game's far from over. Uh, both teams, uh, I, I believe, Ottawa has two timeouts, fly to three, so lots of time. Yep, still both with Central Mesco Financial Services timeouts in their back pocket, should they want them, as we approach the two minute mark here in this fourth quarter of the Division IV District Semifinal. First, holds. Gives to Stack Schulte, rockets a pass to E.J. Miller. Baseline jumper, no, and a foul. Goes against Donoville on the rebound attempt. And we're shooting free throws. We'll see on the ultimate outdoor instant replay, Miller, mid-range jumper. I'm not certain. I think Slagbaum got him down low, and so when he went for the ball, 
he got pushed down low, um, and that's what they called there. Yeah, it was a sense to get slack bomb. His second, seventh by Ottoville. So the front end of the one and one for Jamie Smith at the least famous recipe free throw line. Missed him both the last time. Got that one. Nothing but net. And this is what Claudia needs. They could get the clock stopped, make points. The free throw line, then set their defense up, Garrett. This is what they have to do. Lots of time left. The two possession game. Smith with 14 of Collider's 28 points on the evening. Now with 15. Metzger Financial Services timeout called by Collider, a 60 second variety as the Wildcats trail by five. And we'll take one final break here in this Division IV district semifinal on WOSN. Timeouts tonight are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Also, high school basketball tonight on WOSN is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. 34-29, Ottoville with a five-point advantage over the Kaleida Wildcats out of the Metzger Financial Services timeout. And here's that full court pressure, about three-quarter court, one, two, two, length of the wings. They've got uh, length on the point. Ottoville's got tack to reverse the ball. Number three seed Ottoville with the lead over number two seed Kaleida. Get it across the timeline at Turnwald, ripped away by Jaden Smith, and a foul committed in transition by the Big Green will send the 6'3 senior Back to the line, shooting one and one. And you saw the mistake Turnwell made there. He turned his back against length. And when you turn your back, this is what happens. And again, a chance to score points if the clock stops. Foul committed by Carter Horseman, his second. One and one. No. Slack bound the board. And that was a big miss. And Ottawa wants the ball in Slagbaum's hand as much as possible here, even against his own. Got to get it across the timeline, do. Horseman, Seaver, double teamed. Nearly stolen away by Kaleida. First tried to poke it back into play, dribbled it on the sideline. So the Big Green retained possession under 90 seconds to go in the fourth. And a five-point lead. Kaleida won the first matchup, 47-45 between these two. Line Clyde can't wait long. I mean, the clock is starting to become the friend of Ottaville. That's where they want the ball right there. Schlank bomb bounces. Lang house. Got rid of it. Foul committed against Michael Turnwald. So the 5'9 junior goes to the line. Missed the and one opportunity moments ago here in this fourth quarter. Turnwald, 75% free throw shooter from the league's famous recipe free throw line. One and one. Can't hit. Smith the rebound. Wildcats need to move quickly. Trailing by five as we approach one minute to go. A bounce to Smith. Back to the basket. Hands off to Warnicky. E.J. Miller, baseline. Fouled and he'll get two cracks out. And Clyde has done a great job of getting the free throw line at the clock stop. They haven't converted very many, and that's why it's still, you know, a two possession game, but they did the right thing. Go to the basket when you're down. Make them make a play and make free throws here to finish. Wildcats have only scored two points here in this fourth quarter. Miller shooting two, got the first. And I believe uh, all three points are free throws, Garrett, is that correct? That is, I believe you're correct. E.J. Miller, by the way, a 25% free throw shooter coming in. Can't hit the second. So the lead is now four for the big green. And that's, I know, at least four missed free throws here by Kalai in the fourth quarter. Wildcat faithful thought there was a travel and a 10 second violation. No, oh, we got a one saying 10, one saying a Metzger Financial Services timeout and the official closest to the Ottoville bench will have a conversation about it. Yes, and that's a good job by the officials getting together because we had a 10 second call and we had a timeout. Our officials, Reyes, Ramirez, Brad Ellerbach, and Asa Donaldson 
And they'll say it's a Metzger Financial Services timeout awarded to Ottoville. Our turning 10 at 10 is back all this week. Catch 10 games airing at 10 p.m. on WTLW and WOSN Tuesday through Saturday. Part of 24 tournament broadcasts this week alone. You tune in, lose the remote, and enjoy some high school basketball action in the districts for the boys and a regional tournament action for the ladies here on WOSN and WTLW. And Mark, when you get that situation, is there a definitive way to decide who was first? And normally in a regular season game, yes, because the crowd's not like this. This crowd is very loud, and it's impossible to know opposites in the floor who had the first call. And so you have to go uh, with, with the gut feeling of all three got together and made the call. So the third official who wasn't involved helped make that call. And, and again, every play matters, but that's a tough call. There's not a right answer, I don't think, on this because the gym is so loud right now uh, in this game. Yeah, it just was so demonstrably from our vantage point, the official closest to us had given a, a hearty 10-second call, and the official closest to the Ottawa bench said, no, 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 I've got a timeout. And it just it, 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 under a minute to go in a four-point game. It's, it's tough to say one way or another who was first. Absolutely. Lots of things. Friday still has two timeouts. It's a two-possession game. Ottawa's not shot well from the line either. Um, they want the ball in Slag Bomb's hands. That's the bottom line. Senior leader. Langhouse fouled, and the 6'1 junior will shoot the front end of the one and one. Both teams two and three on the season, and games decided by five points or less. Conceivably, somebody's going to better their record here in the final stages of this fourth quarter. And Langhouse is a 45% free throw shooter, is what I have. That one off the mark, but he chases down his own rebound. Hands off to Schlagbaum. They'll have to foul him. And what a heads-up play by Jace Langhouse. Able to chase down his own miss. And he knew better where it was going, and, and you feel for Coach Dexel to here. They, they've really done everything right in this fourth quarter, but make shots and make free throws. And that, in that case, they didn't get secure the, off, or the defensive rebound. And, Every play matters in this kind of game. We said first to 40. I'm not sure where to get there. Evan Stack Schulte, the 6'3 senior forward, leading scorer for Kalina, fouled out. A schlag bomb goes back to the line. Nailed it. The leading scorer for the Big Green now has six, and he'll go back to the Lee's famous recipe free throw line looking to grow the lead. I beg your pardon, the six. And it's incredible, Gara. All seven points of his are absolutely huge in this game. The three at the end of the yep. quarter, the two free throws there by the senior leader, that's big. Smith hands off to Justin Siebenick. Jacob Siebenick, I beg your pardon. First to the window, fouled with 25.1. And he'll have the opportunity to shoot two free throws. And I've said this has been a good thing for Kalina. The clock stopped, but they haven't made free throws. Yeah, so no, it doesn't matter if you don't make free throws here. That's what every possession, they need everything to go perfect here in a two-possession game with 25 seconds to go. Jaden Smith will mop up a little perspiration on the baseline. Kalina shoots 60% as a team from the free throw line. They were 100% in the first half. Things have not gone their way from the Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line here in the second half. Where they trail by six, 25.1 remaining. Drew Fersh, 5'11 senior, shooting two. Fersh with five. Lots of things here still could happen. Uh, Clyde has two timeouts left. Don't need to use one on the free throw. They can sub, uh, which is what they're doing to set the press up right now. Great play. We get a sub to the bench. First spins it one more time. 57% free throw shooter. Nailed them both. And that's outstanding coaching, Garrett. Gives them a chance right. to sub, set their defense without using a timeout. They can still stop it twice with the clock running. And that's just an outstanding coaching move there by Coach Stechshorty. Both sides with the Metzger Financial Services timeout in their back pocket. Kaleida trailing by four. Schlagbaum. Horseman bounces it across the timeline, and a foul committed against Horseman. So he will be the free throw shooter 
for Ottoville, looking to salt away a victory, leading by four with under 20 seconds to go. And again, no matter what happens here, Garrett, two possession game uh, with two timeouts. So again, that, that's, a, that's a way to extend the game. Horseman's first attempt. No. First comes back in the game. And he'll give some instruction to Jaden Smith. Horseman, 60% from the line. Leading by four, looking to make it five, does. Wildcats got to move quickly. Smith spins to the window. They let him get it. He makes the bucket. And a Metzger Financial Services timeout after the lead gets cut to three. So 12 seconds to go here in this fourth quarter. 37-34. We talked off the air and have mentioned now throughout the game that we thought, you know, maybe the first of 40 wins and might not get there. Might not get might there. Might not we, matter. We still could. But again, now a one possession game, there's so many things going to happen now. Both teams are in double bonus. Um, so again, one free throw that Otto, if Ottawa could make that is huge. Even if Kalina steals it, they don't have to have a three because they still have a timeout left. They can still stop the clock. So there are still opportunities here for Clyde on a steal, uh, a turnover to shoot a two because of the timeout situation. Well, and they've got that length that, you know, if you can get even just somebody guarding the inbound that we've seen, you know, being in a tight spot. We've seen tip balls. We've seen block shots. We've seen, you know, the ball bounce Kaleida's way sometimes. And we'll see what they can put together here with under 20 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Division four district semifinal between the third seed at Ottawa Big Green and the second seed at Kaleida Wildcats. And Ottawa can run the baseline here, Garrett, after a make, the and so they have that opportunity to move. Carter Horseman. And I expect the ball to go to one person here. And they're trying to get it to him and do. Schlagbaum fouled in the backcourt by Ethan Warnicke, his second. No, his, yes, his second. And that's all you can ask for there, to get, get the ball to your senior leader, which we all knew was going, he still got it. Schlagbaum, a 72% free throw shooter, shooting two. Has now both squads in a double bonus. Nothing but net for the clutch senior. It's the most incredible eight points I've seen in the game, how much he changed the game tonight. Uh, by not shooting it well, but by controlling the game. And that three at the end of the third was just huge. Yep. Missed the second, so it's still a four-point game. Smith lost the handle, still loose, bounces to first. Has to move quickly. Let's one fly off the front iron. Teardrop from Kaleida, no. And the Ottaville Big Green get revenge from a Putnam County League game earlier in the season. And they end the season of the Kaleida Wildcats with a 38-34 victory here in a tight contest at the Alada Fieldhouse. And just a great basketball game. And again, we're going to see great sportsmanship here. They, such respect for these two programs. And, you hate to see one of you lose tonight, but someone had to win, and Ottaville made the plays when, they, when it mattered this game. So 38-34, the final score, the Ottaville Big Green. Moving on to the district final. Of course, the Big Green made it all the way to the regionals last year before falling in the regional semifinals. And they will play the winner of Crestview and Delphi St. John's, who we'll have for you in the nightcap here from the Elida Fieldhouse. With the win, Ottaville moves to 19-5 on the season. Kaleida will end their season at 19-5. When you take a look at the final statistics, Kellen Schlackbaum, 8.6 rebounds. And we mentioned it, the eight points is not a lot by any stretch of the imagination for somebody who averages 14. But they came just at pivotal moment after pivotal moment. He had four steals. The whole defense tonight was, was revolving around slag bomb and, and, and have to add to the, the, the and one by Michael Turnwall. When Ottaville was playing defensive a little bit, not attacking the basket, 
the and one opportunity by Michael Turnwald was a huge play in this game. And so many plays by both teams. And, and he's, again, you hate to see somebody lose this, but when it ultimately came down to it, um, the turnovers were a factor and offensive rebounds were a factor too in a, in a very close game. Jaden Smith, 17 points and 10 rebounds in a losing effort. And I don't know that you could have asked him to do much more. Seven of nine from the field for the senior who will go out here in this district semifinal. Uh, but 17 points and 10 rebounds in a big game. It's a great effort from the senior. It was, and he was exhausted at the end. And I think some of those free throws that were missed and some of those plays that happened were out of exhaustion. He, his minutes were, were, were hard minutes. And, and when you, when you play an emotional rivalry game, so much energy gets taken out of you by yeah. those effort plays that he made tonight. So it's time to name our Stolly Hustle Award winner, Mark. And when you look at our options, who, who stands out to you the most is the most deserving of our Stolly Hustle Award winners? Well, there's so many different players tonight. I mean, you, you, look, you look at what uh, Turnwall did, you know, just the, the end one. It was, yeah. it was one basket, but huge. And, and off the bench, uh, we, we, we had some, some players that came off the bench tonight. Uh, yeah, Keaton Schnipke. Keaton Schnipke had, had an yeah. awesome game to get, you know, seven points for them. Um, and Alex Seaver hit some big shots tonight, made free throws. So um, it, it's really tough to call, but I'm going to go with off the bench, Keaton Schnipke tonight. I think he gave him a, the, the boost they needed, the seven points that he had tonight. He had four rebounds, uh, including two offensive that were big. Um, it made some really good plays for Ottaville to help them get over the hump tonight in a really close game. So Keaton Schnipke is our Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight. For more Stolly Hustle Award winners, check out the WOSN YouTube page. A lot of it for game number one, the Ottaville Big Green. Moving on, a 38-34 victory over the Kalina Wildcats. We'll step aside and have more basketball action for you. Coming up, Crestview and Delta St. John's in the nightcap from the Division IV District Semifinals here at the Alada Fieldhouse on WOSN.